Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sultan Line English Worship. Uh, already, it's our third week of this new year, 2024. Uh, one of the new year resolu re resolution, I hope and pray that it will be uh, for us to all be wise enough to manage our time according to God's will. Okay, so I pray for that. All right. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, this is a quiz. Do, do you know that in the Bible, there is a Jewish holiday that seems to be very, very similar to Halloween? Anyone know this Jewish holiday? Passover. No. Passover? No. No clue? Um, Alright, I'll give you... Purim. Have you heard of Purim? Wow. Yeah? In Korean, it will be Purimjar. Purimjar. But in English or Hebrew, it's Purim. Okay? It falls around the end of March, usually. Uh, this year, it will be the 24th of March. Okay? So, what's Purim? Okay? What is Purim? Now, it's, I told you it's very similar to Halloween. What's the characteristic of Halloween? All dressed up in costumes, right? My son, when he was young. Who knew? Uh, children will wear funny costumes like a uh, clown, princess, the girls love to wear princess costumes, and they will go to school. This is a school. Everybody would wear in costumes, makeups, not only the students, but also the teachers, staff members, faculty members will all be wearing funny clothes and costumes like Halloween. Now what do you do? They give out, on uh, Purim, they give out gift baskets. And what's inside the, uh, the basket? You see the snacks, uh, uh, juice, or wine, or grape juice, chocolate candies. You see the mask to cover your face. And also they give out like rattle toys, like this. It, you swing it, it makes a very loud noise. Okay? Why do, you, why do you need that? Because during Purim, people will go to the synagogue and read the book of Esther. And whenever somebody reads the name Haman, who is the enemy of Jews, they will make noises. Okay? That is a, it symbolized to blot out uh, the, the enemy from the Bible. Okay? And this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they will eat a very special traditional uh, cookie, homemade cookie called Ozne Haman. Ozne Haman, it's in Hebrew. Can you guess what this looks like? It's a part of a body. Quiz. Can you guess what this looks like? Triangle. What? Triangle. Triangle? Of course it's triangle, but it's a part of a body. What does it look like? Anyone? Like no? No. There's a prize. Oh, that was a prize. <laughs> Wish Wishbone? No. You can see it. Actually, you can see it. It's part of your body. Tongue? Tongue? No. Heart. Heart? Can you see the heart? You can see it, actually. Isn't that, that difficult? What does this look like? Me? No. Face. Face? No. It's in, in your face. In your face? It's in your face. Everybody has it. Nose. 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 Eyes. Ear. Eyes. Ear. Yes. yes. <laughs> I have a present for you. Uh, who were living in Persia, 
the Jews living in Persia, why they started to celebrate Purim. So we have to go, it starts from the story of Esther. Okay, so we have to look through the life of Esther, why they started to um, celebrate it. Purim means in Hebrew, uh, lots, as if casting lots. Okay, casting lots. And Puri is a day to a day people celebrate Puri to commemorate uh, uh, the saving of Jewish people from annihilation at the hands of hate of the enemy. Okay, and usually it's um, it starts according to the Jewish calendar. It's the 14th day of the month Adar, so that's around March, end of March, and it's one month before Passover, okay? so it's an annual thing. People, people are very excited because they were saved. They were saved, all the Jews were saved on that day. Okay? Now, Esther's life. You, we've, we've heard the story of Esther, right? Queen Esther, I remember. Okay. Esther started her life with a continuous misfortune. As a child, both of her parents died early, so she was left as an orphan, orphan girl. And the only relative that she had was an uncle, her uncle. So the uncle took care of her and raised her in his house. Okay? And as a young child, um, her native country was under the rule of a stronger country. So she had to learn a foreign language foreign culture in a foreign land, okay? And she went through all these difficulties as she grew up, and time passed, and one day she grew up, she grew up beautifully, okay? And one day when she became an adult, the king, the king, uh, was looking for a queen, and fortunately, Esther was picked as the queen of Persian Empire. Now this is a very unique thing, it's a very rare thing, surprising thing. People at that time didn't know that she was a Jewish girl because she hid it as a secret. Okay? But it's as if it's a very rare case, it's as if, uh, let's think about a Korean common girl, an orphan, becoming the queen of Japan during Japanese colony. Can you imagine that? It doesn't happen. It never happens. But this happened to Esther. Okay, this happened to Esther. And it was a very surprising thing. Everybody's attention was upon Esther, her success, how beautiful she was. People were thinking, wow, how you know, how much beautiful or how beautiful is she to become a queen? So everybody was so curious of her looks. Okay? But there was this one person who had a different interest in Esther. When, uh, whereas many people, most of the people were interested in Esther's success or Esther's outlooks, but this one person was put, put his attention on some someplace else. That was God's invisible hand upon Esther's life. And that was her uncle Mordecai. Remember the Mordecai, the, the only relative that she had? He, his name was Mordecai, and he was a Jew. He was, uh, he was working in the palace of a uh, Persian king at that time. Okay? Now, so Mordecai always thought of, you know, there must be, God's purpose for raising Esther, a Jewish orphan, to become the queen of Persian Empire. And he always thought of that. And he wanted to know why. Okay? And in the passage, today's passage explains, talks about God's purpose for Esther to become a queen. Okay? <coughs> Shall we read Esther 4.14 all together? One, two, three. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. Now, 
Now who knows, but that you have come to your royal capture, royal position for such a time as this. Okay. Now, okay. First, I need to talk to tell you about the background story, of Esther. Okay. Now, at the top, you see Xerxes. He was the king of Persian Empire. Okay. In Hebrew, his name will be Ashverosh in Hebrew. Xerxes will be the Greek pronunciation or English pronunciation, the same. And you see at the bottom, the main figures in the Bible of Esther will be Haman, Mordecai, and Esther. Okay, three figures. Haman, as mentioned, he was the right-hand servant, a high official of King Xerxes. All right? He hated the Jews. First, he hated Mordecai because Mordecai was a Jew and he refused to bow down and give honor to Haman. That was the reason that Haman hated the Jew. Not only that, Haman decided to get rid of Jews and also the whole, the whole Jews living in Persia. So he made a plot to kill all the Jewish people living in Persia. And somehow he got approval, approval from the king to make an edit to kill all the Jews living in Persia on a certain day. And that is where Purim comes along. Remember, in Hebrew, Purim means casting lots. He cast lots to fix the date to kill all the Jews living in Persia. And that was the 14th day of the month Adar. So actually, Puri was supposed to be the day for executioning of all the Jews living in Persia. It was a very frightening day, but God changed it to a glorious, happy, uh, celebrated day. Mordecai was uh, Esther's uncle. He was also a Jew, and he worked in the palace. Okay? Mordecai advised Esther. Okay, to, to uh, keep it as a secret. Do not mention that you are a Jew. Okay? That was his advice. So Esther, the Jewish orphan, who started off as a Jewish orphan, by God's help, by God's blessing, she became the queen of Persia. And she was selected as a queen. Okay? Now Mordecai found out about this evil plot. The Purim day. So he, the Mordecai, asked help from Esther. Now Esther, at that time, it was against the law for anyone to to approach the king without summon, without being summoned. So if anybody, even the queen, approached to the king and the king didn't stretch out his golden scepter, then even the queen would die at the spot. And Esther at that time couldn't meet the king for 30 days. The king didn't call her, so she couldn't approach the king. And this was the situation. And she had to approach the king to ask for help. But she hesitated because she feared for her life. You didn't know what will happen and she feared for her life, so she hesitated. And this is when today's passage comes along. Mordecai, by the lips of Mordecai, he warns uh, Esther that if you keep silent in time of crisis, then God will send another help from elsewhere. God is going to save the Jews from another people, but for you and your family, you will perish. That was his warning. Okay? So after hearing Mordecai's warning, Esther made a decision. Okay, let's, let's see what she did. Esther's action in such a time as this. Number one, she identified herself with the Jews. Okay? If Esther only thought about her life, her comfortable life in the palace, and if she was so satisfied with the wealth and the beauty and the comfort zone, then she would she wouldn't care of what of the sufferings of other people, of her people, right? But 
she identified herself with the Jews. If they die, I die too. So she identified the fate of Jews equals her faith, my faith. She identified herself with the Jews. And number two, risk losing all her privileges, even her life. For example, life in palace, her status as a queen, and her safety. Okay? By approaching the king without being summoned was a risk for her. It was risking, risking her life. You don't know what the king would do. But, but she risked it, and she thought, okay, if I lose it, then I lose it. If I perish, I will perish. That was her attitude. Okay? And number three, fast and pray to God. So she said to her uncle, pray for me. Ask all the people of Jews to pray for me for three days, fasting and praying for God's help and God's wisdom. That's what she did. After praying, fasting and praying, God gave her the courage and God gave her the courage to approach the king and appeal to the king. Okay? And God gave a special wisdom to Esther okay? how, to, how to appeal to the king. Now, if Esther only thought of herself, she would never fulfill God's purpose in times of national crisis, right? But because she focused, she tried to discern what God's purpose in her life was, she was able to save the people of Israel from the evil plot of Haman. And that's why even today, the Jews celebrate Purim every year, every year. Okay? Now, brothers and sisters of Christ, we have a our nation, South Korea, also has a success story. Do you know that? And we call that the miracle of Han River. Probably you've heard of it, right? After the Korean War in 1953, okay, we had to start with nothing. After the war, everything was in ruin. Our small country, the peninsula, you know, 70% is mountain. It's, it's a mountainous land. It's hard to it, it's hard to sow seed and reap from that land. Okay? We, we don't have any oil, we don't have natural resources, diamond, gold, or, or gas, oil, nothing. What do we have? Nothing. We have people, and, and people dedicated, people of faith. And God somehow blessed our country abundantly. What do, what do we have? What have we achieved now? By God's grace. We are now leading the like global K-pop, K-culture. We're leading it, aren't we? But don't think of it as self-achievement. It's not us. It's God's invisible hand. He has poured all the blessings upon our nation. For what? Of course, there is a special reason, I believe. A okay? special reason for Koreans to build churches, schools, now we're sending the second largest population of missionaries throughout the world. I think there is a purpose for that. God's purpose. And as a Christian, we need to discern, figure out why. Why God has provided us with so many blessings upon our nation. What do you hear from news nowadays? We hear threats, don't we, from the north. Every day the, the leader threatening us. In case of war, he's going to preoccupy South Korea. And he's doing, and the North Korean regimes are doing all these ex missile experiments, threatening us, right? He's also named the primary enemy, our country as the primary enemy of North Korea. He's threatening us. Now, what do we do as a Christian? Okay. We need to. We need to act like Esther, okay? We, we are facing a national crisis, and we need to decide what we're going to do. Are we going to keep silent, or are we going to use our status, our position, our resources to 
ask for help and do something about it. We need to decide. We need to pray. Fast and pray for our safety, that God will protect our country, South Korea. Not only that, it's important as a nation, as a we need to identify the pain and suffering of North Korean civilians because we are the same people, right? Okay? We don't agree to the regime, no. They are they could be the enemy, but the people, we are the same. So in time in when it's God's time, when he opens up the uh, the country, then we need to be prepared to do something about it. We need to identify the pain and suffering that North Korean civilians are going through. And we need to be prepared to, to share what we were given by God, to help, help them in time of need. And we need to pray and be prepared for that. Okay? We shouldn't be satisfied in the comfortable life all the privilege that we are enjoying, okay? We cannot end there. There's more to it. There's invisible, there's an invisible hand of God upon us to do something about it, okay? So let us be prepared. Let us pray about it. And uh, I'm not talking, you know, right now, but uh, when the time, when it's God's time, okay? We need to be prepared uh, to do something, to make an action, okay? when there's a need. Amen? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you.